Well, Hurricane Ian's impact still being felt across Florida and here in our area, especially. As CBS 12's Al Pefley tells us tonight, the cost to local citrus growers is still being counted. Hurricane Ian caused massive damage in southwest Florida. Vero Beach is a long way from that area, but Hurricane Ian had an impact here as well. On our grove, we lost, we figure about 25 percent. Um, you still see some of the effects from fruit falling, you know, days and weeks after, so it's not fully known yet. Lewis Schacht is a part owner of Schacht Groves near Vero Beach. His grandfather started the business back in 1950, which grows oranges and grapefruit on about 105 acres. He says Hurricane Ian winds didn't knock down any trees, but the fruit is another story. It was enough to blow off, especially your heavier fruit, your grapefruit and navel oranges and stuff that was hanging heavy on the tree. Lewis is grateful the damage here wasn't as severe as it was in other parts of the state, but he admits it's just another thing that will impact costs. Are we going to see a dramatic increase in juice prices in the stores? I, I don't think it's, it'll be significant. I don't know about dramatic, but it's, it'll be, uh, It'll be noticeable to the eye, just like pretty much everything else in the in the uh, grocery store for sure. The USDA citrus crop forecast shows Florida orange production for 2022-2023 down 32% from last season and grapefruit production down 40%. And that forecast doesn't even include the impact of Hurricane Ian. Shaq says the main reason for the ongoing decline is citrus greening, a bacteria that stunts the growth of the fruit. We try to, to battle the disease by tree, keeping the tree as healthy as possible, feeding it more regularly than we ever used to, um, trying to feed it in different ways, whether it's through the leaf or through the roots. It's sad for sure. I mean, um, my dad's going to be 92 next week. He's seen a lot more than I have, and it, it hurts him to see this, but it's uh, you know, it's reality. It's uh, something we have to face. Shaq says despite the challenges, he has no plans to stop growing citrus. His family has been in this business for decades, and he says now is not the time to get out of it. Brightline will begin speed tests along the Treasure Coast tomorrow. The next hurdle is connecting the West Palm Beach hub to Orlando. CBS 12's Dylan Huberman joins us in Port St. Lucie with the new safety measures that all drivers will notice. Dylan. Liz and Lily, these tests are a huge step forward for the train line with added safety features, and they'll apparently hit speeds they haven't reached before. The top max speeds from West Palm to Cocoa will be 110 once we're operational to Orlando, and our max speed from Cocoa to Orlando will be 125. So this is significant because this is the very first time that a Brightline train is going at 110 miles an hour through this corridor. This week there will be one test train, which will make 10 to 16 runs a day through the six crossings in Martin and St. Lucie counties, gradually increasing speeds and testing brakes. But the big question residents are asking is whether there will actually be a stop on the Treasure Coast heading to Orlando. Is there going to be a guaranteed spot on the Treasure Coast? When would that be announced? So we are, we're focused on getting to Orlando. We're 85% complete. We're getting close to wrapping up construction in the early part of 2023. And we're beginning to have conversations um, about, you know, additional um, station locations. It has always been part of our vision to have a stop in the Treasure Coast and the Space Coast. So it's not guaranteed, it's just a possibility. For now. We're, 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 we're beginning conversations. There have been multiple fatal accidents on the tracks when drivers try to beat the train or drive around the gates. Brightline has new improvements to address that. We have quad gates here, so every crossing where a train is going to go 110 miles an hour, you're either going to have quad gates that come together, making it very difficult for people to drive around the gates, or we're going to have medians that also deter people to drive from driving around the gates. Acting Assistant Chief of Police in Port St. Lucie, Carmine Izzo. People end up getting hurt. A lot of times it's uh, through a mistake that was made, something they shouldn't have done. Uh, if they, if we all adhere to the safety protocols put forward by Brightline, no one should get hurt. The testing window will be about 7 to 4 each day, and the train is slated to leave the station in West Palm tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. Holidays are right around the corner, and while this is a time to celebrate with loved ones, it can be extremely hard on anyone who's struggling to put food on the table. And that is why, for 32 years now, CBS 12 News has been partnering with the United Way of Palm Beach County and the Palm Beach County Food Bank for Project Thanksgiving. It's a program that lets all of us do what we can to ensure every family has a wholesome meal to share this holiday season. And as usual, our Kara Duffy leading the charge for us on this. Kara.
Good morning, Matt. Yeah, it's something you know we have all seen firsthand. The price of just about everything is up right now. Food, gas, and housing. And because of that, the local food bank in the United Way of Palm Beach County tells us they've seen a growing number of people turning to them for help when it comes to feeding their families. Over the next few weeks, the Palm Beach County Food Bank is hoping to stock these shelves with all the essentials needed for a warm holiday meal. I think people are really deflated. I think they're, they are just feeling you know, down and, and struggling and you know, they just they're going to need help this year. They're going to need help this year more than ever. Communities are encouraged to come together to raise money and host food drives all as part of the 32nd annual Project Thanksgiving. Your dollar isn't stretching as much and it really, really is wreaking havoc on many, many of our residents here in Palm Beach County. The United Way of Palm Beach County will then work with its network of local nonprofits to distribute food items and grocery store gift cards to those in need just in time for Thanksgiving. Families are able to use a gift card and purchase the ingredients that they need to make a special family recipe, a tradition, that type of thing. And so it really gives them the warm feeling of providing something that's meaningful to them. And there are several ways that you can help make a difference this year. First, you can donate online at unitedwaypbc.org. You can also text THANKS UW to 41444, or you can mail a check to the United Way of Palm Beach County. We have posted all of that information, plus some more details over on our website, cbs12.com. And Matt, Sam, keep in mind, just a $20 donation can help feed a family of four.